And earthly people are like the earthly man, heavenly people like the heavenly man. Have you ever wondered, and gen genuinely, I have wondered this, have you ever wondered, ever wondered why Jesus hung around for 40 days after the resurrection? What was that all about? Did he not have any place to go? I mean, he did. He did. He wasn't waiting for a bus. He, Uber, it, he was here for a purpose. Here's, a, here's, here's what we know. We know he was here to absolutely confirm beyond a shadow of a doubt by probably over a thousand people that the resurrection was real. And we talked about it last week. The historical fact of the resurrection cannot be uh, rationally denied because of those incredible 40 days. But I just wonder if he wasn't also here for 40 days to show us very clearly what what we will look like and what we will do in our resurrection bodies. We have this 40-day look at a resurrection body. It's the prototype of our own resurrection. What did he do? He did some pretty cool stuff, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we, you know, go back to the Gospels and read the ends. You know, he walked through doors, showed up where he wanted. He did some of that cool stuff. But listen, here's what he did mostly. And this is what amazed the disciples. This is what should amaze you. And this is a picture of heaven. Listen carefully. For 40 days, Jesus walked and he talked and he ate and he fellowshiped and he was a very real part of the people's lives that he loved. He lived a very real life, a tangible life where he interacted and related and ate and made breakfast for his friends. Now, look back at verse 49. Just as we are now like the earthly man, we will someday be like the heavenly man. Doesn't that inspire you? That's what the Bible says our own resurrection is going to be like. Walking and talking and eating and fellowshipping and caring for and loving those we love and those we used to not love, maybe I'd say. You know. <laughs> All right. But if we're going to look and act like the resurrected Christ, we have to go through a transformation. You know, right? We have, to be, we have to go through a transformation because these bodies in their present state cannot be or do what Jesus Christ was or did in his resurrected body. That's Paul's next point starting in verse 50 as the heat hits keep on coming. Verse 50 of 1 Corinthians 15, what I'm saying, dear brothers and sisters, is that our physical bodies cannot inherit the kingdom of God. These dying bodies cannot inherit what will last forever. He's not saying we won't have a real body. He's saying that these bodies must be transformed in order to, to be ready to embody the life of heaven. Why? Why? Because, because look at yourself, you know? <laughs> yeah. Let me ask you a question. When Jesus was resurrected, why was his body not still in the tomb? Because he was in it. His body wasn't in the tomb because he was living in it, in a resurrected body. Similar, but radically different. Was it the same body he was crucified in? No, it was not. But was it similar? Similar enough for Thomas to touch the hole. Similar, but not the same. In line with, in continuity with, which is what he started with, but radically different, and so will be our own resurrection. That's what the Bible says. In line with our earthly body, but glorified, a body designed for living in heaven. Amen? Amen. 